Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 2020 American Canyon Virtual Candidates Forum. We're excited to be um, here with our mayor candidates today. We have our current mayor incumbent, uh, Leon Garcia, and we have Councilman Member Mark Joseph. So we are excited to um, kick off this forum and get to the questions. Um, first, I'm going to um, introduce myself. I'm Valerie Zizek Morace, President and CEO of the American Canyon Chamber. And um, I am happy today to have these two amazing candidates in front of us. And um, I'm going to allow both candidates to have two minutes to speak. We are going to keep time. And when time is up, we will ask them to stop their um, questions and we will proceed to the next candidate for the question. Uh, we have several questions that we've gathered today. We've gathered them from both the chamber, our um, government affairs committee, and the American Canyon residents. They've had the opportunity to submit questions prior. Um, if you're watching via Facebook Live, we will not be taking any comments from Facebook or our YouTube account. Um, if you put questions up there, they will not be answered. So I just want to make that sure that that's clear, that all questions had to be submitted um, ahead of time in order to make it fair and make it easy for us to navigate through the questions. So I'm going to give both candidates two minutes to um, give me their opening speech and give us a little bit of an idea of who the mayor candidates are this year. So I'm going to go alphabetically and start with Mayor Leon Garcia first. Our uh, incumbent um, candidate Garcia will get a chance to have two minutes to give us his opening speech. So Leon Garcia, it's your turn to speak. Well, thank you. And uh, good to be here this evening with all of you joining us in on this uh, new virtual uh, forum. Um, I've been mayor here for 14 years at American Canyon. It's been a very uh, active time in our community. A lot has happened. Uh, within that span of time, our city population has doubled probably from 10,000 to about 20,000 people. They come from all over. Uh, and what attracts people to American Canyon, uh, they like it a lot because it's a small city. It's very safe. It's got, got good schools, a lot of open space for family activities. And that's very family oriented. Uh, my career, I was uh, 28 years at Knapp State Hospital, uh, retired and reinstated at Yountville Veterans Home for another seven years. So my problem with uh, travel has been recognized by a lot of people. Uh, the traffic congestion is big. We'll get into that more later, I'm sure. Uh, I was a nurse instructor for a lot of years, and a lot of my staff uh, co-workers uh, who I work with uh, at those facilities are, live here in the American Canyon. So we've known each other for a long time. So I've been able to see the uh, the business opportunity grow in American Canyon. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, retail. Uh, well, we didn't even have a grocery store at one point. Uh, now we have two. Uh, the school uh, system is uh, a bit of a challenge right now, given that everybody's uh, learning from home, uh, trying to get people back in the classroom in a safe way. Uh, but we will have a new uh, Napa Junction uh, elementary school, probably opening at the end of uh, summer. Um, a lot of things I've been involved with the community, a lot of it's primarily community service. Uh, a member of the American Canyon CERT team, um, belong to a group called COAD, uh, Community Organizations Assisting in Disaster. One of the big things we're dealing with locally is food access. We still have a lot of families in need, you know, totaling around 500 uh, with all the facilities that are serving it. Um, actually, we, my wife started a personal protective equipment uh, donation uh we were surprised on the first saturday we did that actually valerie uh, helped us out with that one as well and we got forty-five thousand surgical masks donated just forty-five thousand it was awesome so we split them up and certainly gave them to hospitals like kaiser vallejo Sutter solano vallejo and all the nurse providers and uh home care providers that uh, we could find in american canyon um i've actually Thank been you, very active also time. okay Thank you, Mayor, that was for two minutes. I don't know if you can see the timer, but there is a timer that's appearing down at the bottom of the screen that'll give you a little bit of an idea of where you are. So if you see that in the corner um, of your screen, that will just be a little guide for you to follow time and then we can keep it on point. So thank you so much for your introduction. I'm going to move sure. to Mark Joseph. And um, from my, Mark Joseph, you have the same question. You're welcome to give us your opening statement. Well, thank you very much, uh, and I want to thank the Chamber for hosting this event. It's, it is the premier uh, 
forum for uh, local American Canyon politics. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, I hope most of you know who I am, but just in case, uh, let me give you my background. Uh, started with a uh, degree in public administration, and I have over 30 years experience in local government, primarily finance and management, uh, including uh, 13 years here in American Canyon as your finance director and former city manager. Uh, and in that time, uh, played a very critical role in developing this community. Uh, the mayor talks about the two stores that uh, are there now. Uh, I helped get them both built. So I do have a lot of background in local government and particularly in finance and business development. But I've also been here for 26 years. My wife, Cheryl, and I have been involved in the community in Kwanis, uh, Arts Foundation, Relay for Life, um, helped build the bocce ball courts, uh, and involved in the Kwanis food drive uh, as well. And of course, the last 10 years I've been on the city council. I do think uh, in trying to distinguish why you should support me, uh, I think there's two issues. The, the first is that financial background that I have. Given the pandemic that's going on, I think, the, the fiscal consequences are gonna be devastating to the city and some of the financial background, someone who's budgeted or balanced budgets for 30 years is the right person to be the mayor for going forward. The second relates to the what I see the role of, of the mayor. I want the mayor to play a, a better leadership role, to be focused on future, being proactive, but also focusing on the important issues like traffic, climate change, and the long-term fiscal stability of the city and of course, being solution oriented. I believe I can be that mayor and I hope I will get your support. Uh, and I hope this forum will allow me to go into more detail on all those issues. Thank you. Um, just to keep it fair tonight, I'm going to rotate back and forth um, between the candidates. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. So we started with Leon, we will proceed with Mark for the next question. And we'll just keep rotating back and forth throughout the forum to give it an equal opportunity for everybody. So I'm gonna start with our first question of the evening. And the question is, with economic development being a pressing issue in American Canyon, please list your top three development priorities and what resources you would use to achieve results. And Mark, I'm gonna let you leave. Okay. okay. Um, let's see, economic development is one of those top priorities for me. Uh, I think if I were to focus on my top three, uh, it would be the, the 29 corridor, the industrial park and Watson Ranch. So let me start with the, the, the corridor. We finally adopted the uh, Broadway district specific plan, but it, it needs implementation. And one of the things I think we need to focus on is investing in some of the initial infrastructure projects. For example, sidewalks, curbs and gutters, undergrounding the utility lines. All of that would, would create a, a transformation that we need to see on the, on the corridor. Uh, we also need to look at the, the corridor as creating three or four unique neighborhoods that are all kind of self-contained with their own neighborhood retail sales and services. So, so that you have a sense of community, even though it's essentially a two mile long uh, commercial strip. So that would be the, the first priority. The second priority, the industrial park, I think what we need to do there is work on the things we already have. We have a very robust uh, food and beverage industry with Mazetta, Coca-Cola, mm. Calibo chocolate and others that I think we need to expand on that and maybe even merge it with tech and have a wine tech center or encourage our own locally grown artisan food producers. We're also very strong in e-commerce with Ikea and Amazon, and we need to pursue that and build that as well. The last piece is Watson Ranch. Uh, I think it's going to be the there there for American Canyon. And in getting that kickstarted, because we've approved it two years ago, but getting it kickstarted means you've got to get access across the railroad at Rio Del Mar. I will fight for an at-grade crossing. I know it's difficult, but it's essential to save the, the, the project millions, as well as making it safe and economical. So those are the three areas I would focus on. Thank you. Thank you for your statement, Mark. Um, next, we'll move to Leon with the same question. With economic development being a pressing issue in American Canyon, please list your top three development priorities and what resources you would use to achieve results. 
Well, thank you for the question. Uh, incredible opportunity exists here in American Canyon. And I think uh, particularly with uh, the uh, ruins as an event center, which will draw a lot of the visitor uh, uh, dollars that come to our community for our uh, hotels and restaurants as well. Uh, at grade crossing, as mentioned, is an important piece. We do need to uh, engage actively with the railroad, with the state uh, utilities commission and our developer to make sure that we can get an at grade crossing. There is a solution there somewhere. I'm sure we'll find it. Uh, that's going to be a major draw into the uh, city and create employment opportunities along with housing opportunities as the housing development continues, by the way, the developer is currently starting on that already. Uh, the plan development area, the Broadway specific plan, has an idea to be very creative with how we place retail and, uh, and uh, housing next to transit. Uh, that's why we got it. I think that will help relieve a lot of the traffic congestion on the highway by being able to uh, have transit and, and uh, retail and uh, housing together. If you think of the uh, apartment development there, Canyon Ridge over there next to Walmart is an example of that. You know, there's transit and uh, you can buy your groceries and really don't have to drive. Green Island Road is an opportunity as well. Uh, we're doing some major construction along that, redoing the road. Uh, the road surface was a country road and uh, it will be re-improved to handle the heavier traffic that goes down it. Likewise, we have the uh, Conduit for the fiber optic uh, to, for the all the companies out there that use uh, internet. Uh, frankly, the demand for a long time has been the Wi-Fi is not fast enough and they want fiber optic. So we'll provide that. The uh, build out of that is going to, to build up a lot on what we can draw to American Canyon. And I think there has to be a way that we can look at our markets out there and be able to uh, market American Canyon. And I think that needs a closer look in terms of expanding our economic borders. You know, economy is regional. It's not just isolated to us. And I think the larger we can reach out to find those uh, interest in this area, the better. Thank you, Leon. We greatly appreciate your response. Um, the next question you're going to get to lead with Leon and um, I'm going to read that for you. How do you view tourism in American Canyon today? And how do you view it in the future? Well, we have some credible assets in American Canyon. You know, we have a uh, beautiful wetlands trail system. It's 14 miles long. It's, uh, you know, probably more for mental health uh, purposes these days than everybody being sheltered at home and limited access to uh, the out, uh, what activities they can do. I see an awful lot of families down there on weekends, and that is a draw. Uh, I think the Newell Open Space is another attraction. As I said before, the uh, the ruins at the uh, and gardens at the Watson Ranch development. Uh, that's going to be a tremendous draw. Here's an advantage we have. See, Napa County is very restrictive about weddings at wineries, but we're in American Canyon, the city. I expect we can draw a lot there to a, a rather unique uh, venue for them. Here's another opportunity. Bicycling is a very popular sport. And if we're working on, because I've had conversation with Mayor Sampayan and Vallejo about uh, working together so we can connect the bicycle trail from the Vallejo Terminal all the way up to Napa. And by the way, if you get to Napa, you can go to Yonville, and that is being completed all the way up to Calistoga here down the road. So I think these are opportunities that we can access for ourselves. How do we, uh, who do we want to draw to American Canyon? Uh, that's the other piece of our marketing piece. I think we sit down, we have that conversation, the usual SWOT analysis that one does, many of them myself, on uh, who is our market, what do we have that can draw them, how can we welcome them to American Canyon, so they will enjoy their stay and want to come back. I was at a uh, tourist development uh, meeting there in Solano uh, at the Six Flags. And when it was over, I ran this young family coming into town. Oh, we, just, we like coming to Six Flags. Oh, where do you stay? We like to stay at the Doubletree in American Canyon. Oh, there's a marketing opportunity right there. So I think if we look at for what we could attract for the region, not just Napa Valley, and there's economic development opportunities to attract tourists and have the benefit from that. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. We appreciate your statement. Um, next, the qu same question is gonna go for you, Mark, and I will reread re the question for you. How do you view tourism in American Canyon today and how do you view it in the future? Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think we need to look at tourism in the context of other uh, elements of our tax base. Uh, that is to say, 
tourism is important uh, as a financial opportunity for the city, but we have to be careful that we don't grow too much or become too focused on tourism. Um, there are other communities in this county that have become too dependent upon tourism and, and as we've seen in the COVID-19 uh, environment can be catastrophic. So the first step is we need to make sure we, we look at it as a balanced uh, approach and make sure we don't um, go too far off onto the end of tourism. But to your specific question, right now tourism is uh, more, of, we're more of a secondary market to the Napa Valley. Uh, we do get uh, a lot of spillover from Vallejo, uh, as the mayor pointed out, but also mostly Napa Valley. And as a member of the uh, Tourism Improvement District Board, uh, I've been able to watch and observe how we, we try to be, move beyond that uh, secondary market to being a market in and of itself. And I think our outdoor amenities are certainly critical in that regard. Uh, I, Proud of the fact that I played a role in, in acquiring some of that open space, wetlands and Newell. And I do believe it's an asset uh, currently and in the future. But longer term, uh, the, the ultimate is Watson Ranch and the ruins there. It's an almost magical place. And I do believe that over time, uh, it will represent an opportunity to create a there there for American Canyon. And uh, that's, that's how I see us approaching uh, tourism in, uh, in this environment now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your statement, Mark. Um, and as you know, you're gonna get to the next question as well. So um, I'm gonna set you up. The chamber knows right. that living and working in your local community is added value. How we attract more? How can we attract more high-paying jobs? And what industries would you target? Good. Um, that job housing balance is is one of the things I've uh, been an advocate for for years uh, because I do think it will have tremendous benefits. Uh, not the least of which reduce traffic congestion, increase our uh, economic capacity here at home. Uh, give people an hour or more a day added back into their lives. So it's really critical. Um, and in, in addressing it, we need to look at both sides. There is the job uh, end of it and there's the housing end of it. So meaning that if you can keep your housing affordable enough, you don't need um, you know, $100 an hour jobs uh, and so forth. So it's really a balancing act. Uh, as it relates to the economics, uh, I think we need to look at our industrial park. That's that's where the opportunity is. And as I said earlier, I think what we have to do is look at our existing industrial uh, clusters, if you will, uh, food and beverage, uh, logistics and, and uh, commerce, and build on that. Uh, like I said, explore the possibility of merging our wine industry with the, with tech and coming up with a wine tech center. Um, looking at building our own uh, food brands that have a Napa Valley uh, brand, but are local uh, local businesses. These are some of the opportunities we can do to create better paying jobs. Uh, as we get the more Coca-Colas and Amazons and Ikeas, they will bring in their uh, supervisors and management positions, and, and that will help. And, and, and in furthering that, uh, one of the things that we started several years ago was uh, Canyon Estates, which is some 35 custom-built uh, lots and custom-built homes. Those could be the, the, the homes that these higher-end uh, positions might be wanting to buy. So if you look at it holistically, you want to look at both the job opportunities as well as the housing opportunities to make that job housing balance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, the same question is for you, Leon, and let me read the question again one more time. The chamber knows that living and working in your local community is added value. How can we attract more high paying jobs and what industries would you target? Well, thank you for that question. That's uh, of course of interest to uh, a lot of people. We're largely a, a commuter community and being able to market our uh, capacity to grow uh, in an area that provides more local employment, a bit of a challenge. But on the other hand, it's an incredible opportunity. The uh, planned production areas in the Bay Area, that's where areas where they're looking at uh, industrial development, 
I'm on the executive board with the Association of Bay Area Governments. This has come up in the conversations looking at the entire Bay Area. This is one of the last affordable places for industrial development. Places in the South Bay and uh, West and East Bay have basically uh, priced themselves out of the market for a lot of startup type companies. I think we need to look at technology. Certainly that is a growing area. Uh, that is something that we could uh, have a local training for that, to provide the workforce. You look at say, for example, uh, in Napa Valley College nearby had a training program to meet the needs of uh, the talent that uh, workforce needs to, to grow their businesses. That's an asset as well. Uh, again, as I said, marketing. What do we have? What are our strengths here in terms of what we can draw people in for? You know, we have adequate water supply. Uh, we have a, a rail line coming into town that makes uh, transportation of goods across the country much, far more affordable than trucking it. Uh, we have a, 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 a proximity to markets in the Bay Area. That's why uh, IKEA is here, and that's why Amazon is coming, I'm sure, because uh, they, they, it's affordable in terms of their scale of marketing. Uh, it's easier for them to get workforce uh, to and from and uh, the housing um, product here is affordable. So that would be my plan to put it together. We need to expand our horizon and, uh, and hear the voices of those out there who uh, want to develop. We'll take them to lunch. Show them a tour of the city. Uh, these are options that they can have. Really, it's, it's something when you, when you see it, uh, it's something that sells itself. much, Leon. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Leon. We, we greatly appreciate your comments. Um, the next comment is, or question is going to be directed to Mark and he's going to get to go, for, or I'm sorry, that we're, we're back at Leon. I'm sorry, we're going to Leon. Um, <laughs> and our, our next question for Leon would be, how do you think we can balance the transportation needs resulting from natural growth along with the quality of life issues cherished by the residents? Transportation needs. Well, uh, the congestion on the highway, there's some solutions to that. Mind you, we have to understand this from uh, beginning to uh, analyze the, the situation. Caltrans owns the highway and it's under their control. Uh, and do we do have a relationship then working with them, but it takes it uh, an awful long time, it seems like, to get solutions uh, approved. But we can extend uh, Devlin Road. It's getting very close to coming down to Green Island Road. City got a $4.2 million grant for the road construction that will get us to Green Island. What we need is alternate routes to and from city. So it provides an avenue, say for example, truck traffic now go from Green Island all the way up to uh, the airport and out onto the highway. Extending uh, Newell Drive to uh, Green Island Road along the west side of the city uh, will release some traffic congestion. And the uh, extension to South Kelly would uh, even provide a better opportunity in my opinion. So the quality of life, uh, likewise, is our transit system. You know, 16% uh, fare buck recovery is what's expected. That means, you know, the other 84% is subsidized. I think we need to look at a better uh, improvement in uh, how we get around. Uh, certainly, uh, ride sharing has been uh, one of those possibilities that, that has uh, worked for a lot of uh, companies. Uh, one thing that I uh, uh, brought forward to the council and it was approved was uh, requirement of staggered shifts. For example, IKEA, the employees that are working day shift come between seven and uh, before seven and after nine. So we're relieving that amount of traffic on the highway and there's 300 employees in that, that company. Uh, so we can be creative about that. I think the uh, providing a pedestrian and a bicycle access, uh, I'm sure uh, quite a few people would be able to uh, take advantage of that uh, if it were safe. And uh, that is something that we can look at in terms of uh, what we do within our city limits in terms of being able to provide people to opportunity to get around and enjoy uh, the outside fresh air and, and get some good exercise while they're out shopping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Leon Garcia. We appreciate your response. The question's gonna go to you, Mark. I'm gonna repeat the question. Um, let me just, uh, we were having a little bit of sound issues. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't coming from my end. How do you think we can balance the transportation needs resulting from natural growth along with quality of life, life issues cherished by residents? All right, well, thank you. Um, well, I think the, the first part of the question is uh, really gets back to that job housing balance that I talked about earlier. 
because that's really the secret. As you get people living and working in the same area, uh, you kind of address transportation organically. Uh, the second point is I'm going to start from the assumption that this is a great community. It's a great place to live and raise a family. We, could have, we do have a great quality of life currently. The real challenge, of course, is dealing with the transportation. So let me focus on the three elements that I think are critical. First, the Devlin connection is almost going to be finished. Uh, it'll wrap up next year. Uh, but what's left undone is what we call the West Side Connector. We don't know how we're gonna connect from Green Island Road down to Eucalyptus. And without that connection, uh, all that traffic is just gonna fall, uh, pile up on Green Island in 29 and create a nightmare. So number one, we've got to address the West Side Connector and I don't think it should be part of the general plan update. I think it needs to be addressed sooner than that. Uh, on the east side, uh, the Newell extension is important. Uh, I've been pushing that since, well, longer than 2015, but on the record as of 2015, that it should have been part of the, the Watson Ranch project. That didn't happen, so plan B is working with uh, the developers to get the road built, working with the county to secure the additional funding necessary and get that done. The last piece is the 29 corridor itself. Even though it'll be longer because we're dealing with Caltrans, it can be part of what I call a transformation of the corridor where Caltrans makes the road improvements, but we're also making investments in landscaping uh, and other infrastructure elements to create those neighborhood opportunities and that walkable uh, corridor that everyone will fall in love with. And that will not only deal with transportation, but it will also balance the quality of life because people will love to live and walk uh, in the downtown area or along the 29 corridor. So those are how I would balance transportation and quality of life. Thank you for that, Mark. Okay, I um, so far all the questions that I have been asking have been from the chamber side, which have been developed from our GAC committee and a subcommittee from that. So I'm going to switch over to a question that has come from the community and we'll go back and forth between community questions and chamber questions and I'll let you know um, where the source came from. So my first community question that I have for you is, how do you think that financial strain from COVID-19 affects our citizens in their everyday lives and how do you help how do you plan to help them recover from this and that question for you mark that's what i thought okay uh well i'm glad to get that question uh, as i said earlier i i think my financial background is critical particularly firm financial stability but that COVID has sped the process up from my perspective, I, I think the issue is you need to literally go through the budget uh, line item by line item and scrutinize it. We also need to be talking about ways that we can operate more efficiently so that we don't need to fill uh, administrative positions, which I opposed uh, most recently, and unfortunately, uh, the mayor and two others approved it. So we, we now have something like another $100,000 a year of general fund costs we're going to have to come up with. So I think the most important step is to use, well, in my case, use the budgeting and financial experience I've accrued over the years to apply it to the city's financial condition and try to make sense out of it. I do think we can save money if we look at things differently. We could put caps on our overhead costs. We could look at value engineering, uh, value added engineering uh, on any kind of major capital project to try to avoid uh, spending a lot of money foolishly. We can also, uh, again, a lot of times we become more efficient uh, if, we, if we have to. So those are ways that we could manage the expenditure side. On the revenue side, I think we need to pursue the plans we've talked about earlier, building the 29 corridor, building the Watson Ranch, building our industrial base. Those are the ways we can, we can make uh, long-term or, or short-term success. Uh, but it's the long range that we also have to worry about. We, we still don't have a plan for financing the deferred maintenance of our parks and streets. So those ideas also have to be built into any kind of a long range solution. But I do believe with my financial background, I'm best capable of, of helping lead us through the, the fiscal crisis we're gonna be seeing because of the pandemic. Thank you so much for that, Mark. We appreciate it. Um, Leon, the same question is gonna to go to you and I will repeat the question for you. 
How do you think that financial strain from COVID-19 affects our citizens in their everyday lives and how do you help to plan them recover from this? Well, financial strain kind of largely landed uh, a good deal on uh, the workforce uh, in small businesses and uh, actually in the Green Island Road area as well. Uh, here's, here, well, here's a creative idea that came forward in the last uh, Green Island uh, industrial area. Um, one of the companies starting back to work, they have uh, issues with recruiting and retaining employees, getting enough of them. And the biggest you seem to be childcare. Well, here's a creative idea. They thought, well, let's build a, have a childcare center. So uh, the families can, instead of having to be at home with the kids, the kids can come to a child care center near where work is. I mean, that just, that's a small thing. <clears throat> but with families with kids, and we are largely a family community, that can mean an awful lot. And I was uh, involved with uh, putting one together at Napa State Hospital uh, many years ago when I worked there. Uh, and it was hugely successful. Frankly, it helped me. One of my job was to be able to staff the place uh, three time, on three shifts a day. And that worked immensely. What are their needs? We need to find out from people how we can help them. You know, we had a uh, Mark uh, worked on a project with uh, tenant uh, protection because of uh, loss of employment. They uh, needed to uh, uh, cut back on uh, all their uh, expenditures of funds, and they were not able to pay full rent. Actually, the state has uh, improved that when Ma moved it out to into next year, even don't, uh, recognizing that people who are, have businesses need staff. If they don't have the staff, they can't run the business. If the business gets shut down because they can't pay the uh, the mortgage or the rent, then they're going to lose the business and more people will be unemployed. So I think on the city side, it's of course, it's uh, managing our budget efficiently. Our uh, city uh, finance department does an excellent job uh, with uh, city manager Jason Hawley. Actually, they've re received many uh, accommodations and, and uh, acknowledgement for the quality of their work. They do an excellent job. So I think it's uh, looking for opportunities to help uh, families and uh, the businesses in town with their needs is where we should focus. Thank you for that, Leon. Okay, great. We're gonna move on to another community question and um, Leon is gonna have the opportunity to lead this one. In your opinion, what role does the mayor play in economic business development? Specifically, what creative policies can be developed to attract and keep a variety of businesses that serve the diverse needs of our community? That's a very good question. I think uh, as a mayor, I'm always one out there advocating and a champion for the city. So I think it starts with the networking of uh, other economic opportunities out there. You know, as I said earlier, our, our economy is not just uh, local to American Canada, it's regional. I mean, you know, Vallejo shops are Walmart, we shop their Costco. It's just, that's just one example. So I think to have better, having a better understanding of what the regional economy uh, challenges are and the growth opportunities are, expand it through a larger footprint that involves not only our community members, but those from outside as well. And I think the, the way we, uh, it starts with a conversation. It really does. And it starts with a knowledge base of what's out there. So I think we look at uh, what opportunities might exist out there. What are other communities doing within our Bay Area region? And that would be the North Bay. And how might we be able to attract uh, some of that business into American Canyon? Uh, a plan, a plan uh, completing the general plan would be helpful with that. That'll take a while. But in the interim, uh, we have the Broadway specific plan to look at. And uh, what might we put our heads together with and, and explore options and possibilities to be able to generate more uh, uh, economic interest. What's a survey of local folks want? You know, what do they want in terms of a retail opportunity in American Canyon? And how do we market that? It's not just looking at the population of American Canyon when you, when you market. Uh, Council Member Ken Leary and I attended a very informative uh, conference uh, webinar or uh, workshop with uh, Buxton, which is the premier retail recruiter in California, so they self-describe, they said, yeah, you have to look at your region much further and see uh, what are consumers interested in and what are purveyors of retail uh, opportunities uh, need in terms of being able to expand that base. And yes, I think that's, it's very active. I enjoy doing it. And there's an opportunity out there uh, waiting to be, to be uh, accepted. Great, thank you. 
All right, Mark, the same question is going to go for you. I'm going to take one more time to read it so that you have the full understanding. In your opinion, what role does the mayor play in economic business development? Specifically, what creative policies can be developed to attract and keep a variety of businesses that serve the diverse needs of our community? All right. Well, uh, first of all, I think you have to start with an economic de development strategy. And that strategy should include uh, a revenue plan that I've mentioned earlier, balancing tourism versus retail versus industrial and even residential. Uh, it also needs to have an, an infrastructure plan because a lot of times uh, you aren't going to get economic opportunity until you create access. So building a road is, is sometimes uh, the easiest way to create opportunities. Uh, and then lastly, the marketing and, uh, and strategies of making us more business friendly. So first, develop a strategy. Second, uh, it's consistent with what I think the role of the mayor is. The, the mayor needs to play a more uh, aggressive role in the areas that are important like business development or climate change or traffic. And so in that regard, one of the things I'd do if I were elected is set up appointments with all the major property owners in American Canyon and all the major developers and sit down and talk to them and say, what, what is it that you want to accomplish? What can the city do to help? What can the city do not to help? Sometimes uh, not being there is, is, is an asset. Uh, and, and basically identify what, what opportunities there are out there and then aggressively pursue them. Uh, the, the second point, once we, we do that initial contact, is do the analysis to figure out what businesses would fit in American Canyon. Uh, we're a very family focused uh, community. So maybe a uh, combination uh, go-kart, uh, bowling alley, uh, video arcade system might work. So let's go out and identify what businesses do that and then aggressively connect with them and talk them into coming here, at least exploring. I think that's how the mayor's role should be played, where in effect, he or she becomes kind of the economic development guru for the city because we don't have a dedicated position and yet it's so critical to the success of our community. All right, the next question, you're gonna to get to leave this one, Mark. Um, how do you prioritize the city's needs for deferred park maintenance with the community's desire for new amenities such as Clark Ranch, Wetlands Kayak Launch, or a community center? Without a dedicated source of funding, how do you envision these projects being complete, both deferred and new projects? Again, I, I thank you for the question. It, it's one of the issues I've raised is we don't have a plan for deferred maintenance. And I've raised that for several years. Uh, and I think it's a shame because our older amenities are, are wearing out. So number one, I think the priority has to be to maintain what we have before we build more. Uh, and in that regard, I think we simply have to make it a point to identify revenue sources. For example, there is a hotel uh, that's being planned uh, right between, uh, well, just, just south of the uh, visitor center, for example. That could generate three or $400,000 a year in revenue. We ought to uh, earmark that to go towards a capital reserve fund so that we have the monies to be able to program and, and renovate our parks and roads in a timely manner. So that's the approach I would take, is identifying funds and basically earmarking those off the top instead of saying okay whatever's left over that's what we'll put in i think we start from the top and say we're going to put you know a half a million dollars a year into this reserve fund and, and and build it in that fashion and then balance the budget after that that allocation so i think that's the most important thing is dealing with our existing infrastructure as for new amenities uh, a lot of that we will get from park impact fees a lot of that we can secure in grants. For example, the kayak, uh, we were lucky. We got, I think, a $400,000 grant to study a number of issues out at our wetlands, including a kayak launch. And so the opportunity there is uh, grant fundings will probably uh, provide a good source of funding. So for me, I would get focus on the general fund to address the deferred maintenance elements, but also as far as new amenities, grants, impact fees, and sometimes community volunteer efforts and fundraising will be the, the way to, to get the new stuff. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. We appreciate your response, um, Mark Joseph. The same question is going to go to you, Leon. I'll repeat the question just so you have a full understanding. How do you prioritize the city's needs for deferred park maintenance with the community's desire for new amenities such as Clark Ranch, Wetlands Kayak Launch, or a community center? Without a dedicated source of funding, how do you envision these products, projects being complete, both deferred and new projects? That's truly a challenge. And so you can, you can always have a, a dreams are larger than oftentimes a pocketbook to pay for it. And it's sad to see some of the, the state of some of our uh, parks, uh, lighting and landscaping districts. And you know, I've always said, you know, you, people are paying for that. They ought to deserve to get the quality of work that they uh, should have for that. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's a toss up between uh, what are our priorities and uh, being a family oriented community, lots of kids here, recreation and parks are, are vital to uh, the quality of life in American Canyon. Um, so yeah, there's, there needs to be a, it's always a, a challenge putting together a budget for the city. Uh, you know, this push and pull in different directions on what our priorities and what the community wants. Reality is, is there's only so much money that we can have. We get fortunate in, in getting us grant funding from time to time, uh, but that only happens from time to time. And to, for a specific project, for example, uh, as development uh, continues, there's an opportunity to uh, get those park impact fees uh, to use them. And we have built amenities in American Canyon with that, but so keeping the upkeep on them is uh, the big challenge. And aside from a uh, revenue source, well, you know, if people want to uh, contribute toward that, then uh, certainly there has been a conversation from time or two having a part bond, bond uh, before the people to see if they're interested in supporting that. I don't know that it carries much weight uh, at this time from from uh, times we looked at it before, but maybe it's a matter of saying uh, to folks, uh, how important is this to you? And how should we proceed with it? You know, we have things like uh, streets we have to repair and uh, all the public works uh, activity that we conduct uh, on a daily basis throughout the city. Uh, so it's a matter of prioritization. And, you know, there's certainly a volunteer base. I have worked with a group of uh, volunteers on some park improvements, uh, maintenance issues, and it can be helpful. Thank you for that, Leon. Great. Um, we have we have a few more questions to get through. We're making great time. Everybody is being very courteous to the time and we're moving right along. So um, the next question, I just want to um, let you know that it did come from the community. We feel this is a great question as well. Um, Leon, this one's going to be for you. How long have you been a politician and what have you learned from COVID-19 that could be implemented in case of more hardships like earthquakes, mutated COVID-19, PSPS, and wildfires? Yeah, see, uh, kind of the question of the moment, is it not? You know, I've been uh, elected to uh, American Canyon City Council in 2002 and been uh, a mayor since 2006. Uh, all the organizations I work with uh, are dealing a lot with the impacts of the uh, pandemic. Uh, certainly with the uh, uh, communities organized to assist with disasters, we do a, a disaster preparation program that's, that's beginning, getting ready to roll out. This is what you need in your, your grab bag, your go bag in your house. Actually, we had a, a trial roll out as from some of the churches uh, uh, last year in the fall, which was successful. Uh, public information about it. I mean, one of the critical things that happens in disaster is people's reactions. And I strongly stress always that there has to be a single trusted source of information. So the city, uh, the, uh, our manager, Jason Hawley, and our information manager have that part place on the city webpage, you know, monitor next door. Here is what you need to know to be safe. This is what's really going on in our city right at this moment. So the rumors and uh, that type of uh, it's natural that people react and they, they put things on that may not necessarily be accurate on uh, social media. So I think controlling social media is about that as well. Knowing how to protect yourself and your family is important. Do you know what to do with, with, in terms of uh, uh, health care issues related to uh, COVID-19? You know, that's why we stress uh, wearing a mask. I mean, we we're very fortunate. We got 45,000 masks donated. A week or two later, we got 50,000 gloves. You know, those are distributed out there with instructions on uh, how to maintain your public health safety 
during this pandemic. And the city has a great point for our information on that on the web page. And I think the community organizations also uh, communicated out there as well. Uh, certainly advocacy in terms of uh, initiatives that uh, support uh, disaster preparedness, uh, response to disasters is uh, a paradigm too. Thank you for your response, Leon. Um, the next, the same question is going to go to you, Mark. How long have you been a politician and what have you learned from COVID-19 that could be implemented in case of more hardships like earthquakes, mutated COVID-19, PSPS, and wildfires? Well, um, as a former city manager, I think some people would argue I was a politician even then. So that gets me into like 20 or 30 years. But technically, uh, I've only been on the council for the last 10 years, since 2010. Uh, now, what I've learned and, and what I've done as it relates to disasters, um, I think first and foremost, uh, as the mayor may have mentioned, I think honest and reliable information is probably the most important element. Uh, one of the things we discovered rather quickly was uh, you've got to make sure that information is out there, that people can count on it. So if you say we're going to uh, give you an update twice a day at 10 in the morning and 10 at night, then that has to be the, the dates and times. If we don't have power like we didn't with the, the uh, public safety power shutoff, uh, we actually printed stuff out and just posted it where we normally post uh, other legal notices. So honest and, and reliable information is the most critical. At least that's what we can do here locally. Uh, we've been blessed that we haven't been as impacted as other areas in the county or in the state. Uh, I think we need to appreciate that. Uh, down the road, uh, what things we can do, what we've learned from our uh, emergency response to make it better all along. Uh, personally, uh, I got involved in the Kiwanis Food uh, Pantry operations uh, and helped uh, bag food, shop, uh, and as the treasurer did all the accounting. Uh, I also helped with the, the back to the table and effort to kind of resurrect our restaurants, uh, working with the chamber. And then lastly, uh, because I am involved in a political campaign, I didn't have the time. So I was able to make some contributions, financial contributions to those organizations that are trying to make a difference, uh, primarily for tenant assistance, uh, the COVID-19, the wildfire emergencies, all with Napa Valley Community Foundation. Uh, the CERT program here at locally, the Kiwanis Food Bank and, and COAD. So those are the ways I've tried to do uh, my own personal effort to help, as well as my insights from uh, being 10 years as a politician. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, this is going to be our last question, and this is a chamber question. And um, from there, then we'll just do our closing statements. So um, so far, everything's gone off great. And I'm so thankful for you to be respecting the time moving forward and keeping it going tonight. So your last question will be, if you are elected, what are your top three goals you hope to accomplish? And we're going to start with Mark for this one. Okay. Um, top three would be addressing traffic because if you don't deal with traffic, you aren't going to have uh, a solid economic opportunity or an environmental opportunity. So deal with traffic first. Uh, secondly, uh, restore the, the short and long-term financial health of the city. And then lastly, address climate change. Uh, going back to traffic, I think right now the most critical thing we can do is focus on the Newell extension. I've talked about ways in which I think we can make it happen. Uh, predominantly by working with the property owners and the developers, as well as the county for funding. Uh, on uh, Once you get traffic addressed a little bit, then you can certainly grow your economy. We've talked about that throughout the, this forum, uh, and I won't go into too much detail other than to say that will be a key priority, uh, along with a long-term financial forecasting model so we know what we're, whether we're doing a good job or not and, and identify problems in advance. The last piece, of course, is climate change. We haven't talked a lot about that, so let me spend the rest of my time on that one. I think we've got to adopt a simple philosophy. Electrify as much as you can, and then provide that electricity from renewable sources such as solar and wind. And then secondly, reduce the amount of fossil fuel-based miles driven, uh, which means uh, walking, biking, uh, electric cars, 
uh, transit uh, and job housing balance so that people aren't having to commute as much. And then finally, lead by example. Uh, I worked hard to get the, uh, the solar energy project here in, in the American Canyon facilities, and I will support efforts to electrify our fleet as well as uh, swap out gas powered equipment for electric battery charged ones. Uh, so that's, that's my approach. Uh, deal with traffic, build our economy, and address climate change. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mark. The same question is gonna go for you, um, Leon. If you are elected, what are your top three goals that you hope to accomplish? I think, I mean, uh, that's the, uh, in the uh, energy issue in American Canyon. Uh, but I think there's ways of addressing it that uh, help mitigate it as well. I think uh, certainly uh, working on, uh, as I say, alternate routes, uh, Newell extension, uh, Devlin Road extension will help relieve that. Uh, I think we have to look better at our commuter pro uh, patterns as well and our transit systems, uh, how it interconnects. Um, you know, the uh, bus down to the uh, Vallejo or the BART terminal uh, is uh, packed. That's probably the most heavily traveled line in the system for a very good reason. It uh, has to be able to move uh, effectively. Caltrans has come up with an opportunity for us to experiment on managing uh, the traffic signals uh, down 29. It will help sync them up. So uh, the traffic will flow smoother. It has been a proven technique used in other else uh, cities. Uh, our equipment is a bit antiquated, so that will come up with a whole lot of new equipment to help sync that up. Uh, Economic recovery from the COVID is important, but I think there's opportunity to do that in a way that's not only sustainable uh, economically, but also environmental concerns are addressed as well with that. You know, the solar opportunity is a, a way that has been uh, known for a long time to be able to convert to uh, houses to solar, probably a way of making that easier to do, whatever the uh, encounter with the providers of that. Uh, let's have a conversation about how uh, we look at that as a city in terms of our planning department as well. And a fleet uh, transfer into electric fleet. The uh, Napa Valley Transportation Authority is moving forward to an electric fleet line. So uh, recently that some of the uh, uh, package delivery services out there are also moving into electric vehicles. So something to encourage as well. You know, the less, uh, so the smaller the carbon footprint we have, the better it's gonna be for all of us. Uh, and I think my, uh, my third one would be uh, kind of to do the earlier question here. I mean, we need to work with our community uh, 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 safety officers out there on uh, you know how to be safe. Uh, we have a very effective and uh, uh, role model, I believe, in many ways, uh, uh, policing in American Canyon. And I think that would uh, connect those two together so people know how to respond in an emergency. Thank you for your statement, Leon. We greatly mm -hmm. appreciate that. Um, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to give each of you two minutes to speak to wrap up your final thoughts, talk on anything that maybe I didn't ask a question about, and just give your overall perspective out to the community. So um, because we started the forum with Leon and he got to open with the introduction question, I'm going to allow Mark to end with his end statement and then we'll go to Leon second. So Mark, um, you're welcome to give your two minute closing statement. All right, well, thank you. And again, thank you to the chamber for, for hosting this forum. Uh, I've already talked about you know, the big stuff, uh, traffic and economic development and so forth. So I wanted to point out uh, what I've been learning in the campaign. I, I have been walking door to door, doing more walking than talking uh, with my mask and, and being safe. But what I have learned is that the, the kitchen table issues in American Canyon relate to public safety or traffic enforcement or even deferred maintenance of our parks and streets. And so uh, that's the, the area I wanna talk about. With public safety, I think we need to continue our neighborhood watch program and our community-based policing because that has truly been a very effective approach. Uh, we also need to add more firefighters, not only for their own safety, but so that we can respond to these regional fires, wildfires that are just going to get more and more intense. Uh, as it relates to local traffic enforcement, uh, we can't solve and catch all the bad ones that, that speed, but we can certainly beef up our traffic enforcement capability, maybe uh, provide additional capacity during peak hours, uh, as well as uh, rotating the areas that, that we have our officers focused on. Uh, deferred maintenance of parks and roads, I think we've talked about that a little bit. 
but the last thing I want to emphasize is uh, I do think we need to resurrect the town hall meetings. I was able to make a few of them uh, after I got elected in 2018 or re-elected um, and then COVID hit. But I do believe as mayor, I would want to have uh, at least monthly town hall meetings, rotating them from one part of town to the other, including the mobile home parks and apartments, so that there's a two-way communication uh, so that uh, people can ask questions and also give us feedback. So those are the things I will focus on on the day-to-day -day level. But like I said, the priorities for me is dealing with traffic, dealing with business development, climate change, and being an effective mayor. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mark. Okay, Leon, the same question for you. You're welcome to do your two minute wrap up, touch on anything you haven't already covered or just review something you'd like to talk a little bit more about. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the chamber uh, providing this opportunity. It's great to connect with uh, people on, on uh, social media this way. Uh, I think the, uh, I was <clears throat> mentioning my uh, previous comments there, the uh, uh, public safety side of our community is something people really value. I know, uh, I had an opportunity to sit down with uh, Chief uh, Ortiz and uh, the undersheriff of uh, Napa County with eight uh, ministers in town to have a conversation about community issues with respect to police and public safety. Uh, there were a lot of compliments about how uh, services provided by that department in American Canyon. And uh, in fact, the, uh, the chief said, uh, uh, here's my cell phone number. If you have a problem, call me. Don't, don't let it fester. Just call me up and we'll get to work on it while well, the issue is fresh in your mind. Uh, that's an outreach that was very much valued. Actually, we had a, man, a minister from uh, uh, Vallejo with, who uh, complimented uh, the chief on that and, of course, took down his phone number. So I, th I think that's an important thing. Given the, uh, uh, the nature of disasters we've uh, experienced in this valley and in our city for uh, the outfall of all that, I think the uh, public safety side of it with uh, disaster preparedness is very important. I know I'm a member of the CERT team, and during the October 17 fires, we were uh, had the uh, set up the shelter there at the high school gym, and that just really brought it home about how effective an organization you need. And uh, the CERT, American County CERT team is actually quite phenomenal. To be able to bring people together and uh, get them engaged in public safety issues. Uh, certainly, traffic is a big one to deal with. I've talked about that. So as Mark, um, we, that's not going to go away. And economic revitalization to me is, I think, is on a high order too. How do we help businesses get back to uh, the status they had before? How do we grow more new businesses? And that's a conversation that I carry around with me. Thank you, Mark. Or thank you, Leon. We greatly appreciate that. Um, that wraps up our question series for tonight. I just want to put a big thank you out for coming, for being prepared, for answering the questions in such a respectful manner. And um, I would say that we had our first successful virtual candidates forum. I also want to make sure that we um, put a huge shout out to our sponsors. You know, the chamber does a lot of busy work, but without the funding, we could never make any of this happen. So I just want to give a big shout out to Western Wine Services who came through. We also came in with another anonymous donor. So we were able to cover all the costs and um, we're very, very thankful for that. So um, thank you, American Canyon Business Community for once again, supporting our local community and bringing the services that we need to the forefront. So I just want to give a thank you to everybody who's tuned in tonight who is making their educated guesses on which candidate they're going to pick. And we are very happy to provide this information. You'll be able to find it on our Chamber Facebook page. You're also gonna be able to find it on the website for the American Canyon Chamber of Commerce. It'll be on our YouTube channel. And then we'll be pushing it out to the candidates and um, hopefully they'll share it with their friends and family so that you can have a rewatch and really just get to an understanding for what each one of these candidates stand for. So thank you so much, Leon Garcia and Mark Joseph tonight for your time and to um, educate our community thank on you. what you stand for. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I believe that wraps up our episode and um, we will be back here at six o'clock next week um, on the 30th for our, May, or for our um, city council candidate race forum and we're excited to see how that goes as well thank you well thank you it's been a great evening Bye.